League of Legends World Championship, where we've come down to the final match of the day between international wildcard Pain Gaming and the LMS's number one seeded, rather number two seeded, Flash Wolves. Uh, the Flash Wolves came up big against Kudo yesterday with a comeback, and they're coming into this match with a ton of momentum. Yeah, I think a large part of that was Karsa, the jungler here for the Flash Wolves. This guy, you give him Nidalee, he's the most banned champion against them in general, he's just going to take over the game. And I have big faith in this guy. I honestly think he's the best jungler in this group, considering it's Hojinik, Smithy, Surti, and Karsa. He's also, in my opinion, the best jungler in the LMS but also you have to look at their bottom lane as well. It wasn't just Karsa. NL came in for Kramer and it made all of the difference. He, they wanted to play Varus, they wanted to have a poke composition and they were able to actually outduel the bottom lane of Gorilla and Prey yesterday. I think a big part of that victory also came in from a really crazy draft where they got the Gangplank, the barrel poke with the Nidalee and the Varus. This combination is bonkers and I don't think they're going to get it again as well as the Nidalee. I thought it was a mistake from Ku to ban the Gragas, open up the Nidalee and... We we're going to see Karsa probably take a more passive role in carrying because there's not that many damage dealing junglers. Even though I completely agree with you, this guy is very solid. I have to also add Maple. I think he's been a shining light for this team. His performance on Gangplank and on Echo without teleport, sure, but he was playing both games really, really well. Because on the other side, we have Kami, which I expected more from because people have been telling me that it's the Brazilian faker. But in these two games that he has played in this tournament, he has died more times than the seven games he played in the qualifier to this tournament. Well, I think that the it's a, probably a combination of nerves for Pain right now. You know, there's a lot of pressure coming into this wildcard team, the best wildcard team in the region. Mm -hmm. They might get out of groups kind of thing, and that can get to you when you're in such an underdog position or at least consider, consider yourself to be in that. I expect them to get better as the tournament progresses, shed some of that, and pull some more upsets as we see them because no matchup that they're in, they're, really cons they're always considered the underdog. Yeah, and you're talking about upsets here. Pain, yeah. they like to try to upset from the get-go. This is a team that's not afraid to invade level one and just try to throw you off your groove entirely. Maybe GG in first two minutes. That's what they like to do. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see if they can do that. That's going to do it as we step inside the venue to load on to Summoner's Rift. Mylon says Pain Gaming are settling into the competition and getting their second wind at Worlds. I think that after two games in stage, uh, we'll have even one day to, to rest tomorrow. And then we, I think that the game against Flash Wolves, we're going to be a little more ourselves. So uh, I think we have more chances than the other games, of course. Well, there's one good thing that you guys might have for a chance. Actually, the early game hasn't been great for Flash Wolves, whereas mm. Pain are actually mostly known for that. So that glimmer of hope might be here for this match. Now, guys, before we get into the game, let's do a quick roster rundown for those of you guys to see those lineups. For Brazil's Pain Gaming top laner, Mylon, you just heard him talking about how this might be the chance. The jungler Sir T, the shot color for the squad as well. Kami in the mid lane, known as Brazilian Faker. We'll see if he can step up here. BRTT, probably the most famous player in Brazil. And Diud coming over from France. Now back in his home country on support. MIT, their coach in behind them. Now on the red side, we have the Flash Wolves over from the LMS. Took the win yesterday. Stake, one of the more surprising players in the top lane. Kasa, the best jungler in Taiwan in the jungle. Maple as the mid laner. NL, once again playing as the AD carry. Sword Art is the support. And Fluid Wind is their coach behind the team here. Fluid Wind will guide. Ribbon main. Yep. Very Definitely obviously. So. That and Yasuo. We've seen we've seen two different flash rolls so far. We've seen very disappointing one game and then just like playing a lot better uh, the other time. I feel still fell behind, yeah. but then had to like get back in the game. We saw the gang playing for Mabel early game. He didn't really have much of an impact, but he was against like a five six blue buff Lulu who just constantly yeah. pushed him down. <laughs> it hard. He got to late game though, and. It should be banned away. Nobody should be able to get their hands on Gangplank. Absolutely. And obviously, Pain Gaming is going to be on blue side, so we have to see. And he finally proved to Kobe why Gangplank, you know, should get that blue buff over to Nidalee that game. Yeah. Well, first bans come through. Nidalee gone away. Yeah, Karsa, that's that's not exactly a surprise here. It's one of his very best champions. Mordecai's are gone away from the Brazilians. Gangplank, blue side okay. banned. That is usually not yeah. the case. Interesting, I'm not a fan of blue side banning Gangplank. I feel like that's a pick. Everyone has to be able to play and you can all, you can blind pick it honestly. I think you, you can flex it. You can make a case for doing it, but not as early as second ban. Third ban, perhaps if the ban phase, you know, plays out differently, but with so many like raw OP champions already out, I think it's too early. Nothing I would rather pick than a Gangplank as my first pick, but not for paying gaming. 
maybe looking for a lease for Surti in the jungle. Kalista could come in for BRTT as well. I think we have seen him use before. And it is going to be a lot about for Pain Gaming. Can they beat Flash Wolves in the early game and then try and close it out? While their R team was not always the greatest at closing out games, it's still the way for them they have to play against a team yeah. like this, who's shown in late game team fights they do really well. Yep, well, let's see if they can pry this open here. Last band comes through Elise away from Sir T. Karsa still has plenty of tanks to play for himself. We'll see what Pain Gaming really wants. I mean, I'd go Kalista here, personally, if I was Pain yep. Gaming for BITT, just to get that lane dominant AD carry. Not expecting it for NL, though. Braum is a, is a pick we assumed yeah. would be this high in value coming into the tournament, but a lot of matches have shown us that it wasn't really the case. A lot of these Kalista lanes picked into Braum with then a range support, would just simply smash it in lane and just give your support the freedom to play super, super yeah. aggressively. Always have an additional flash in that Fate Skull available. So Enel does take the Kalista for him, doesn't want any long range, fast pushing champion. I guess once you get the Hurricane, you can take down his waves fast, but not the same kind of playstyle. It does mean with the early Braum, as you just highlighted here before, I mean, if you, do, if you go for double range lane, Flash Wolves have to be able to win that lane. Obviously, Tristana is going to be very difficult now, so I like that pick for BITT into the Kalista and try and shut it down in the laning phase. I just love watching Braum Tristana against Kalista plus range support because in an isolated spectrum, just 2v2 raw, it's a, a pure skill match. The problem is the way to win that matchup requires you to aggressively dash or jump, uh, depending whether Braum goes in or Tristana, with the wealth of teleports. teleports. And then bot lane party happens, and that's what makes it so hard. That's why. Very often, Kalista Thrash will have the pressure, especially it is incredibly hard to take that lane down post level 6 because you can throw the Lantern down, Fate Skull out, pull your own Lantern and get oh out of there. Boys, give me an Azir here for Kami. You're against Kalista. I love Azir into Kalista, the somewhat lower range AD carry. Against the Darius, he hates playing against an Azir. He gets knocked yep. back by the wall, and it's a safe blind pick. Still, even though Mabel will maybe be able to take like a LeBlanc into it or an Assassin into it, still, I wouldn't be surprised to see Azir coming for, for Kami. You got the Pantheon shout, Krepa. Yeah. Diyud hovering it again. Just nice to touch crap. back on that lineup. Last game, we saw Tristana and Azir, and it's obviously weak if you fall behind early against the wealth of AoE, but Flash Wolves really have, don't have that much AoE in their lineup yet. Yes, you can also argue that Azir has an AoE effect, but mostly Azir and Tristana are very single target damage, but it should work well into what Flash Wolves have acquired. But finally, we, or I even get to see the TF from Kami. I really enjoy watching it. Early cooldown boots, early home guards, a lot of teleports around the map. And that's what I'm looking for. Shut down, st uh, stay on Kalista. Shut down Kalista. <laughs> I don't think Stake will be playing that. Shut down and Nell on Kalista and then start snowballing that way. He went with it once in the qualifier, banned against him twice. So not the highest priority, but here in this game wants to bring it out. Pain Gaming switching up the style just a little. The ever so common Nar versus Darius matchup. We yeah. see it time and time again. But it seems that doesn't deter people from picking the champion anyway. Darius still, of course, very common. Definitely going to be two fairly uh, good lanes for Kami to choose on where he wants to go. Darius, who is going to be slowed down by the Frozen Mallet. Going for him, low mobility. That's a kill for you. Bottom lane again. Braum connects that stun or sets up for the stun and then yeah. TF down. So a lot of options here for the TF pick. Obviously, Mabel is looking to play in a more aggressive lane against it and try and shut it down in the laning phase. So Ari's coming through. It's going to be interesting. Mabel hoping to try to break out onto the enemy mid lane and, and keep him down. But Payne is running the very standard triple tank two backline threat here. Yeah, what's going to help Mabel break out of here is the cleanse as opposed to Kami's teleport. So Kami playing. Sustain Heavy, if he gets poked out, yes, he can return to lane, but Maple looks to go aggressively. Even though he has a defensive summoner in cleanse, it allows you to just lock out of that gold card and then immediately keep on chasing Kami down. So it could be interesting to see at level 6 if we see any outlets. Yeah, maybe I'm boring, but I do you are. kind of... Yeah, you are. Sure, fan of. Sure. I do kind of prefer when, when teams run teleport against Twisted Fate as well, from your mid lane, like run Diana or Echo or whatever, something that can follow Twisted Fate when yeah. he goes, because now you're kind of all in on being able to shut him down in the laning phase. That's going to have to be the case for Mabel, because otherwise, double TP and, of course, the ulti from Twisted Fate is so much global pressure. 
from Pain Gaming. Sure, and you can always argue the other side of it being that teleport's cool on so much longer than TF's destiny. Like, do you try to match up to the strengths and not quite compare, or do you try to attack him where he's weaker? And that's just going to be what it's going to be up to then, is how well can Maple stop yeah. Tommy from doing these kinds of things. It's going to be a great game, guys. So as we load onto the Rift, send your predictions to us over here in France. Tweet at LOL Esports with the hashtag PNGWin or the hashtag FWN to vote for either Pain Gaming from Brazil or Flash Wolves from Taiwan and the LMS. And here we go into our sixth match of the, I'm gonna say night at this point, guys. It's 8 p.m. here over in France. Nice. Night applies, and it's the last game of the first week. I'd actually like to see uh, a lane stop here from Pain Game. I feel they have the tools to get out of that lane stop better. It also opens up the map, just kind of can fast push towers, and TF roaming on longer lanes just becomes so much easier. I want to see if Mabel gets punished for, for running planes, honestly. You highlighted why he's doing it just before, but even... But I'm wrong. Even for, the <laughs> <laughs> even for the 2v2 fight that's probably going to happen around this lane now that Pain Gaming knows how Mabel has to win the lane, I would much rather have an Ignite or at least, like, something that can take down Kami a bit more aggressive. Cleanse out of it, sure, is going to help, but the damage will already be unloaded. Yeah, and there's, there's varying opinions, but the consensus from many people is that a lane swap kind of makes mid lane more far more into it, a little more passive. So that is another reason why Pain Gaming may be looking for the lane swap. Obviously, they have a favorable matchup in NAR versus Darius, but later on, that matchup still plays the same way. There's no there's no timing or no power spike or item spike that really defines that matchup. It's the same throughout the entirety of the game. Yeah, I definitely like Tristana and Brom in the late game. Every single time you can get them, I think Brom's the one of the best supports there. Of how much damage he can just remove, yep. single out targets. We can talk about what happened in level one here. All five wards from Pain Gaming are in this northern quadrant of the jungle. I guess one in the mid lane counts. But meanwhile, you've actually got a very uh, disparate start for the wards here of Flash Wolves. And the fact that they see no one from Pain at all means they've got to expect that Pain going for a very aggressive jungle start that they will not get punished for. Since Pain Gaming is starting with their jungle and top laner on the top side uh, for some double jungle, it does usually indicate that they're going for a quick fast push, three mana, four mana, because after the three camps or the two camps, you're obviously gonna get into a situation where if you move your jungle down, you allow the enemy top laner to teleport. Cheeky little move there again. Freak, I see you freaking out here. <laughs> but then explain what happened. So this is really smart by Dude, especially because of where the jungle start happened. He actually bunched up the minion wave before it got down the lane. Yep is going to guarantee that Flash Roll's minions push through pains and it goes back towards their turret. It creates a freeze automatically, or at least it should. If he wants to freeze though, I think he's still gonna opt for the fast push. It does make it so that you lose less minions on lane. If he wanted to freeze, he should have probably given level two to the Brahm to allow him to roam. So knowing that the Ud went to the lane should indicate that they're still planning on fast pushing and diving that tower. But it does save you an extra minion for no cost at all. So Flash Roll's right now with how they were starting in the jungle, red buff. It does kind of force them out to move to top side at level 2 and they can't really go in and clear more of the jungle. If they do, at least, they open up four flash walls to sending guys and defend. And that's exactly there. why they're going to be fast pushing. If they freeze, it's just too easy oh! for the enemy to teleport. Kami, did he steal that? Yeah, yep. he did. He did. Brazilian Faker! I mean, that a was lot, awesome. Though. A lot of experience in the early game he takes away. A lot. Some experience. No, it's pretty significant. It it's more away. than half the camp. He's going to get level 3 first in the wave. Has it already. Gonna slightly slow down the enemy guys, but you see NL starting to push this out. So both teams are looking to fast push, but there's a big difference here in how early Mylon had to join on the top side because they started red buff and walked out to Raves up in that top side jungle. It means simply now he's been sharing experience with BRTT and Dude, where now we see how fast are first joining in here with Steak. And the correct move is then to instantly take the tower down and bounce it back as early as you can while the Opposing team is still actually trying to clear that tower. A little slow here on the side of Pain Gaming. They really want to tower down on the next wave, bounce it, and then they have no answer on the side of Flash Wolves because they're so far behind in, in Tempo. They're Tank behind the play. Tower well, right now. Yeah. Pain will get the same amount of jungle camps. Surti is solo jungling right now and he's going to get the same amount. This is a massive problem for Stake though because normally you want to be full HP, so once this tower dives, your top laner stays and gets it, and he goes back out. Oh, he can sit and farm a little bit. But now he's so low, Stake will be forced to recall and return to now top lane, which is the wave that was going to push away from him. So he's yep. going to be behind compared to Mylon. He's already going to struggle a little bit in this matchup. Very common Western lane swap style here. Well executed by Pain Gaming. They started at the top side of the map, leaving them with almost no other plays available. But the one play they had to make, they made it beautifully. 
and also a mistake by Flash Rolls because of all the damage they took. Their bot lane had to recall to buy before they got met by the Tristana from BRTT, but they didn't finish the turret in time. So the lack Ooh. in gold, all the money shared the way it is, and it's a surviving turret. You can make these mistakes at this level right here. It's it set you so far behind because you didn't gain anything. You don't get any extra experience really on your AD carry because he was still trying to fast push the wave. So you're now in a situation where Stake is in a very, very bad lane up top that's not going to push towards him against a ranged champion. And you didn't get any benefits for your AD carry. Also, you allowed Justana to push. Once she's pushing, it can be hard to stop her. And that removes a lot of the trading potential you have on the Kalista Thresh lane. You, do, you just want to like usually push them in and then poke them out with double ranged autos. And right now, Pain Gaming comfortably in the bottom lane, comfortably in the top lane. Stake gets up her hand, but we'll still get out traded. A lot of minions, though, on Mylon. Yeah, you can see the damage going back and forth. The bleed actually makes it really fast to get to Mega Nara. All those ticks of damage, so we'll heal a little bit thanks to that. Ooh, but Karsa is coming in. Mega Nara's on, hops once. Gonna land this stun over the top of the knockup. Gets away cleanly. Good stun. Really Saves good the flash as well for Mylon. So we're getting that Mega Nara in. And Karsa making the correct play. You gotta make sure Stake can push out the wave as fast as possible and getting bouncing back towards him. So he doesn't stand there and just get poked down. Yeah, you can see that Diyuda and BRTT really don't want to stay in that lane. Uh, in the bottom when it's even because you will just get outweighted so they just go to crux they want to rush to level six at level six you can blow up Callista or thresh uh if Callista isn't level six herself obviously because fate skull can deny that so go back to the lane right now and not enough vision for sword art and nl to really play aggressively here so i think pain gaming will be happy with this overall the experience in this lane is equal right now so you talk about rushing level six it's not going to be really any kind of advantage for pain even with the krug and the better lane swap play right here so you mentioned how long Milan is in the top lane sharing XP that makes it different. I mean, where's Stake going? He has seems to not want to return to that top lane at all anymore, so... Panic. He's double jungling with Karsa well, he's six minutes lane. into the game. He's going to go up and grab the wave, though, once he's he gets pushed down towards him. He's probably just afraid of potentially a gang coming. There's no river control from Flash Rolls. Pain Gaming right now doing a very good job of two pings to basically deny all that vision, making it hard for Stake to go up there and catch the wave in time. I love what Sir T is doing here. He doesn't have to do any camps, just shadow the lane, make it so that Mylon can't get ganked. He's already a full level ahead of Stake here. Stake who had a phenomenal perform performance in the tournament so far, underrated coming in. This time, he's getting the worst end of it. And now Mabel hits level six. So again, we have to look at this matchup. If he's not able to do anything against Kami in the lane, which is so difficult often against Twist of Fate because he can sit so far back and farm. Just wild card and then blue card whenever you can. and It's very easy to play safe as a Twist of Fate. Yep. And then you also have Teleport. Worst case, you can use it defensively if you have to because you still have the ulti. So there's a lot of ways for Kami to say, stay alive in this lane. And then Mabel suddenly will find him in a situation later on in the game where he can't split push because he has no TP and he can't. Like, he can only look for picks together with the rest of the team. And that's where Pain Gaming can do 1-3-1. One, yeah, and that teleport makes it so hard for an Ella Sword Art to go aggressive and really use that Kalista passive on the on the W to out trade because at any given moment they can get teleported on, use the faded ultimate upon, and then BRTT and Dio they can just stay at max range, farm up, get level six, and Flash was having a hard time finding answers to a lot of their problems right now. Stake is luckily for him able to get the wave up top. He's still behind, absorbing all the minions. <laughs> for himself. First blue of the game for Maple. Last game didn't see many of those. Finally got some for himself here. Feeling a bit better on Ari. Not getting counter jungled nearly as hard in this one. Look at the game state right here. It's an 1100 gold lead. That is more than the turret is worth. So farm also going well. Team wide for Pain Gaming. Since T isn't really necessary in any lane, I'd like him to just join mid, push it out, put some pressure on Maple and that Freeze up Kami to go for any roam or gank here, and that could definitely be an aggressive opener here for Pain Gaming. In the mind of good old Sir T at the moment, though, he is probably communicating that he's slightly behind in experience and he wants to just sit and power farm. There are camps available for him, but he keeps looking to this top side because they have that early pink ward in the bush in the river to see if they can punish Stake I mean, look, and keep him down. They're hiding. Island is stealing red. He's gonna get red buff. We have Sir T, not level six, though, remember that. And there's no globals to help the top side. Kami can even come up and 3v1 him, and Mabel can just sit in the mid lane and look. And he's gotta be afraid every time Stake oh. goes this way. Ward getting cleared. Rex is gonna show up into the tunnel. This is gonna be a bit of a fight. Surti taking a lot of damage. Cleanse used by Mabel for almost nothing. Surti gets out. That was so close. Almost finished off there. Mylon. 
surprised he even walked down to that bush though, because he had nothing he yeah. wanted to do towards the mid lane. All they were setting up for was when Stake was taking this big wave up top and just go behind him and gank him. You had red buff Nar, had TF, and you have your jungler there. Shouldn't have even walked down and had the chance of being spotted by Pink Ward, even though he got to kill it. He meant the play stopped and Stake got to push it out. And it looked like Maple thought he had Ignite there. Because he burned his cleanse at the beginning of the fight when Sir T hadn't even body slammed yet. So I don't know what he thought he was removing. I've made that play before. I've flash buried well, I've someone. Been that guy. I've, I've, been I've that flash guy. buried some people before and been like, that control six. Rank five. It's when you do on. the walk of shame back to your tower. <laughs> and you know, you know you done goofed. You just type enemy flash timer. You said nothing ever happened. Oh dear. Well, 1300 gold. I mean. Pain Gaming are doing what I think they absolutely must in this game and have a lead early on, but it doesn't mean anything, or everything rather. And everything Maple... Doesn't mean anything. Everything so. Maple did to win this matchup, pick cleanse, play Ari, kind of goes down the drain. His flash is down, Kami still has flash, so it's almost impossible for Kami to die 1v1, and he should be able to play slightly more aggressive due to that fact, yeah. and maybe find an opening. He still hasn't used his ultimate at all, and he hasn't really needed to, but... Definitely see a lot of plays come out now. Pushing him, it's takes even running mid. It's like, hey, do you want to share this farm right now? Sharing is caring after all, because he's he's getting so screwed in that matchup up top. 30 CS behind him. It doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. Probably because of cleanse. Yep. Still not sold on on the cleanse for Mabel. Well, but it's easy in hindsight. Yeah. Hey, said it earlier. Five. Yeah, true. Want to see him uh, be able to kill that lane and not just sit and farm even, because Pain Gaming later on highlighted before. The fact you can split up in all three lanes with double teleport means for flash rolls, unless they start getting ahead in the game now, their map control or their game plan is basically going to be, okay, we gotta look for picks now with this map and we gotta run together. And as long as Pain Gaming has proper uh, defensive vision down, they're gonna just gonna split up and start pushing and then flash rolls have to always go back and defend the lanes. And look at Kami, he's now spent 4,000 gold in the entire game and he's bought zero defensive combat stats. And he even rushed Lucidity Boots with Home Guards with his TF build. So he's not worried at all about Maple's aggression. So if you do really play the map, not the mid lane. I'm just not even sure why you'd run cleanse to beat up TF. Ignite just is more damage. Gold card stops you going in. Yeah, you can just dash once it times yep. out, right? Like Three dashes to one stun. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's You're obviously a clutch. Him. I mean, that's what he's Maple's decision yeah. with it. Maybe it's also for later in the game, he's afraid of being singled out in a team fight by Kami. That's true. And then he, he gets stuck there and he dies if, he, if he's building full glass cannon, as we often expect sure. from an Ari. So there that are reasons for it from him. But it's costing him a lot in the early game. And because the rest of his team, with the way the lane swap went as well, are still behind, except for down the bottom where they're five CS, six years ahead. We did say gold defensive like, uh, capabilities on Kami. He does have a whole lot of move speed. Boots too with plus. The Aether Wisp movement speed upgrade. He's sidestepping a lot of these charms and, and orbs being thrown at him from Maple. So that's probably his playstyle. You can always see his pacing in the lane is different here. Karsa gets a couple of stacks, but he has to disengage. Kami, at the start of the game, was leaning back and Maple couldn't really touch it. But right now, it's becoming more of a skill matchup where he tries to dodge aggressively. And Pain is just so happy to continue to farm because you're ahead in the top lane. You're Tristana. We always know her mid game with the one item spike is not the greatest. So. Just continue to farm her up. You don't have to risk any early fights against the Callista. Mylan's the only one going aggressive because he's so far ahead in the lane. And he's going to land the second stun with the ulti there. Already dodged the first Q. He's inside for the second one here. Not taking any bleed stacks and stake. Very low. Even eats a house. Mylan goes back to Mini Nar. Can he hop Ooh. on the minions? Not going to try. A jump just came back up, but he's pushing his opponent out of lane. He's denying waves under the turret. And the slow press on all the lanes is getting pain ahead. And when is Pain Gaming gonna close that trap? Mile teleport button, Twisted Fate ulti on the down and bottom, and try and die Fennel here on that Callista. They don't really have to, but it is uh, one of yeah. the plays available to them. And Flash Wheels, try to find out how do they exactly come back. They need to start making more aggressive plays and find an outplay because slowly but surely their, their goal deficit is getting bigger and bigger over time. I want to see Kasa just hit where the global is, right in the mid lane. You have that Ari, go in, land the charm. Kasa comes in. It should have happened a long time ago, but Pain Gaming are basically just saying, we don't have to make an aggressive play. We have all the tools to react to whatever you're doing, except for maybe engage on Dokami, but he has Flash ready. He's sitting so far back in the lane and has been some defensive wards around. So Flash rolls are basically in a situation where like, well, we just have to farm now, I guess. Yeah. 
And they're winning the bot lane matchup, actually, weirdly enough. Plus 15 CS here, NL's getting a ton of farm. Bloodthirster's not far away anymore. Keep in mind that Pain Gamer has been farming the jungle camp every time they had the chance. Give him a little bit extra. Just have to remember, too, the Ute has been roaming a lot, so he traded multiple ro He's killed two pink wards. He's visited mid lane twice. I think that is a fair price to pay for being only 16 CS down and really have yeah. to tower. Let's check in the bottom lane. It actually has off. taken damage, though. The bot lane tower could fall on the next push if the Ute is not around to defend it. So that could be a swing here for Flash Rules, and that may be Maybe that's what they're waiting for, just even out the gold and then start playing more aggressively. Mylon's gonna be there a bit slow. Damage already coming through from the BF Sword NL. Big enough wave, but now they've gotta run backwards here. Can't Moving use Hyper. Position. All yeah. Kami has to do is get into Fog of War. He doesn't even have to make the move down bottom. He just has to... The illusion of a TF ulti can be enough pressure to really disincentivize people from playing aggressively in the side lanes. Well, we've got a new record here, by the way, guys. 13 minutes, 30 seconds, I believe, is our... Slowest first blood of the tournament. We're now at 15 minutes here, and I'm not 100% sure what Pain was looking to do right here. And with now Milan TP to the top side, it means they can go down bottom lane in case they continue to push. But Pain Gaming were a bit split in their decision. Milan was down there to defend. They're like, hey, we can maybe push the tower, go dragon. They're like, no, wait a minute, don't go dragon because tower is now available, and Milan has the TP back top. Milan's presence did generate Pain Gaming that bot lane tower because they chunked down four skillers to back and then left it open for them to take. Then he went back because he really just wants to keep staked out. In that sense, it was worth it to play, but they are playing now with Teleport behind. Well, the thing, they've done this twice now. Mylon TP'd up to his lane much earlier on in the game, and Stake never, ever was able to capitalize on this one. With Mylon pushing into him so much, it feels like Stake can't even leave this lane. That's what it looked like anyway. Pain happy to use TP literally just for farm. I'm not a fan of BT first, Celeste, anymore nope. after the changes to her AD ratios. Went down, I think Blade of the Rune King is so much better for her, NL. Look at that as his first item though, so a little bit more survivability. It's a Q-Max too, it's a Q-Max Kalista, so it is very don't like that either, it's very old school. Yeah, it's too old school, it doesn't work, it's too front loaded, especially when the Yude can position and can deny your entire damage combo. Well, Pain got the inside track in the mid lane, but without the teleport and without their Gnar being anywhere nearby, they were a bit too afraid to push for this one. Ooh. Sure, if I take some more damage, Dragon was the pickup here for Flash Wolves. They trade mid lane turret for that. But you can basically see what's happening. Pain Gaming didn't have to make any aggressive plays, but just because Flash Wolves knows they can never gank anywhere outside of mid lane, potentially, but that has been warded every time. And Wild uh, and Kami, sorry, has been standing so far back, was not calling Wild Card because he's throwing them out. But Flash Wolves are basically just stuck in a situation where only thing you can do is try and group and then create that one pick. Pain Gaming, Wild Card team after all. Yeah. Kami is truly an international wild card. I guess it fits in a lot of ways then. Uh -huh. Flash was though disappointing. They they came in with this mentality, it seems, in this game to really not make any plays. This is the first real play we maybe have seen him. Some aggressive vision. Overall playing incredibly scared. And if you allow Twisted Fate and a couple of teleports to change your mindset, to alter your mindset into a passive farm mode, then the damage is already kind of done. You can you can even make a play, get punished by TF ulti, then make another play where he can't commit using the fact that you have stronger lanes and maybe get ahead that way but if you're playing this incredibly scared against a Kami that hasn't really stepped into the, any of the brushes so far to even threaten you with ulti feel flash rules they may have to yeah play a little harder well unfortunately flash rules were happy to take their time and lick their wounds and make a comeback up against Ku Tigers with a with a more poke oriented team this one of course is not that yeah Pain gaming uh as far as teams that qualified for Worlds had the slowest average game time for wins. I mean, it was over 40 minutes from the close games out. And they didn't even lose any games in their qualifier. They were just dominating people. And, and that's the scary thing, because this is exactly what Pain wanted. A slower early game. They can now use the globals as well. They're going for Steak. And they're going to go for it. Here we go. Steak might be what's for dinner. The whole team comes in, flashes the wall to get out, and Mylon whiffs the hop, flashes, gets first blood. Kars is next. No one's in range for him. Steaks were made. Mistakes were made. He was actually really close getting to getting that lantern there from Sword Art. So bold flash there by Mylon. He wanted stake because he could have opted to uh, go for Carson there instead, but gets the first one. Sends a message too at the same time. So stake very far behind right now. And this is what this is kind of like the reputation he had coming into the tournament. You know, just gets behind and top absorbs. But this really was just a matter of time for Pain Gaming. 
I feel like we keep looking at it, how Flash Bros cannot make plays because of double teleport. Maybe it was in top lane pushing that out, so obviously they know, well, we can just go on the bot side. There's no chance of the Ari being there. And right now, all they have to do is stay alive in this mid lane, and they've been winning out big time. Dude loses Flash, and he whiffs the ultimate. There comes the engage. Karsa picks up the kill on a dude, and L's gonna try to throw in Sword Heart right in a range. Body slam away just in time for Sir T. Will dodge away from Flay. Three turrets to one, though. Pain Gaming have capitalized yeah. on that first kill. We'll see if anything can come back now for Flash Wolves. The summoner teleport used by Twisted Fate. And this is what we were talking about earlier. Just force to play, force you have to use. To to use his destiny, then make another play when destiny is on cooldown. At least teleport takes some channel time, three to four seconds to really complete. That is maybe what Flash was have to do. If they did this more in the entire early game with Callista ultis and potential outplays, they could have had a, a better early game. They sat back way too much. And right here for, for Flash Rolls, I don't think their solution is to go back to mid lane when TF just teleported in, where he can wave plan and yeah. team can defend it. What you need to wrong. do here is you need to take your team, when you know the other team is just use cooldown, some of them is back in base, Get into the jungle. Get in there, deny some vision, because you have an Ari. She's so fantastic if the enemy has to walk in blind, yep. get a charm in the face, but instead you value pushing in another wave in mid, and then yep. you don't gain anything. Yeah, this is one of those plays that just loses you the tempo, the momentum. Call it whatever you want. If you base the members that need to base, if you put some vision, you can start making picks. Flash Wolves in their win, played around their composition strengths, using the poke to their advantage. Right now, I don't think they even know what the identity of their team comp is and they're failing to identify that, let alone play around it. They have like a solo queue all-star team though. Everyone loves playing these champions. You've seen these time and again. But yeah, what, what's the dedicated synergy here? BRTT is pretty much safe in the back line. Only Ari can re expect to reach that Tristana. TF's gonna be safe, throwing out low cooldown cards. Lich Bane's already done, Zonius is next. We might never see Pain Gaming even go into a five versus five team fight. Sure. They're gonna look to just pick off a target instead with the double global for themselves. Mabel is in the top lane, but again, he's now stuck here. So down on the bottom side, Stake is now stuck as well, fighting a matchup he's not going to win. A matchup he's been losing all game long, so slowly again, Pain Gaming can chip away some damage on his towers. And there's no response from Flash Wolves unless they catch out a guy who's then out of position. Actually, interesting that Milan did go for Black Cleaver, over Frozen Mallet here in this matchup. So far, whenever we've seen Nar, I think we've seen more Frozen Mallets overall, just to keep that distance against Stake. Maybe this indicates that he's not Pretty even... Close. He doesn't even want to kite Stake anymore, just wants to straight up kill him because he's so far ahead of the curve. And he has the backup. He does have the backup. If later on, though, Pain Gaming can't close, Stake has the opportunity to duel Mylon at least. Oh yeah, Mylon gonna be definitely more of a damage threat this way. Stake able to run away for this one. Carso looking for the knockup, would have to flash to do it. Does not go for that one against BRTT. I do like the pink ward that was just placed by Flash Wolves here. Trying to, again, when we see uh, just up here on uh, top of your screen next to the Flash Wolves logo, basically you're trying to have some blind spots where Pain Gaming would normally be moving around in the jungle because they want to always send guys down so they can be close to Milan when he's pushing all the way up to the tier 2 tower and then maybe a charm or hook or whatever is coming in and catching a guy and that's the way again to create a kill and then get a tower. Definitely agree. If you're playing any sort of pick composition, Fog of War is your friend. If you look at EDG, they do it fast well, especially in their series against IG and in their regionals, they just use those pink wars, hide a couple of members there and even if they know, they could be anywhere. And that is the advantage of uh, Fog of War and just good vision control. The problem is, Pain Gaming knows where, exactly where it is, and they're not afraid of sitting down the river and just zoning Flash Wolf away. Look for Mabel and what position he can get when the fight breaks out. If he reaches the backline instantly, he can still take them down. He has Death Gap completed, so he's very farmed. Fight will break out. Mylan is coming in. Come. He's got the TP on towards the side. Sir T comes in the knock it. Oh, Maple's gone. And now the fight continues. Sword Art pulled back. Sir T's got to run. Ignites on him. And the Gragas will survive. NL's the Beautiful next one. Easy pick up. Karsa had gotten the kill on a Sir T in the back lines. But Kami going oh. in. He's oh, got his number. Guy. Yep, there we go. Complete oh, slaughter gone. here from Pain Game. Aggressive move before Flash Bros can, can even get their full lineup to the Dragon. Area, they just immediately aggress and take out one of the carries, and then at that point, the fight's already over. Again, you, you play Ari, you play the pick composition. When you have to run down and the other team have full vision of you, the pick potential is gone. It's not there because they can see everything. All you have to do is dodge around that single target CC that's flying out, and then Pain Gaming is more than fine. They were happy just engaging onto it. Mylan came in, he had Mechanar popping about a second later. Yep. And 
too easy for, for Pain Gaming really to clean up the fight. This Kalista pick is by no means paying off, also because NL is building his wrong. Build, yeah. And he has like no real spike in this game. Well, the last two years of the World Championship, took, it took to the very last day of the group stage for a wildcard team to get their first and only win of the World Championship. Here we're just in the first half of the groups and Pain Gaming looking sizably ahead here over the Flash Wolves. Team that had just yesterday taken down the number one team in this group right now, the Ku Tigers. This group is actually looking much closer than we may have expected coming in. The one weakness though is Pain Gaming's tendency to play incredibly small games. If they ever you know, make a mistake and don't really water Baron enough, Flash Wolves do have the potential to sneak it and finish it off with Kalista. Have to be careful for that. Right now they're denying vision, so they're actually playing to their strengths, which is picking off in Fog of War. Oh. Well, at least it got on the blue buff back. A nice slow from Mylon, gets charmed. Get the slow again on a stake. This could be the target they're going for. They're gonna arrive right in. Oh, Mylon's the front line, but he's too low to transform before dying. BRTD to kill off stake. The rest of the team disengaging. Once all again, well. though, look how confident Pain Gaming is because they see all members from Flash Wolves. Nobody's gonna die in the back line. So BRTG just walks forward. He picks whatever target he wants. So he is there trying to single out targets as well. And Mylon didn't get Mega Null while he was on top of five members, but at least he pulled or he was part of the fight starting. And Pain Gaming just constantly can pick whatever target they want and take down Flash Wolves. All they have to do, all they can do really, is just run. Well, they're gonna try to defend right now. Hook on a BRTT. Oh, the shield's in front, but it's not enough. NL gets the kill, and Flash Wolves strike back and save the turret. Bit too wow. overconfident right there. You can't expect that Thresher really, really nicely clipped next to the minions right there. But BRTT should never get caught, and DU could have positioned slightly better with that unbreakable book. Nice little hook, though, from yep. Sword Art. Really good hook. Just so close to the minions that you think you are just hiding behind it, yep. and then you get pulled in anyway and ends up dying. Bend the hook. Bend it, man. Watch that again. UTT off on the very bottom. So he's actually just in front of him and oh. just barely tacks the corner of his model. But you can definitely see what he's thinking to himself. Oh, I, I'm so close to me. I just got to move a step further and I'm behind it. And then the hook flies out and gets one kill for Flash Wolves. Didn't manage to get anything else. One TP is available for Pain Gaming. And as you said before here, quick shot. It's very important now that they start making more plays. We've seen a few team fights coming in from them. And that's what they need to keep doing. See if they can find the way in. They've got Ari, they've got Thresh, and they've even got Darius teleport plays to maybe get these fights started. But Pain Gaming have so far been running him around the map, up a turret, and up two kills, up 3,000 gold. That's the road ahead for Pain Gaming here. Flash rolls though, they came back from behind before. Pain game, if they can actually push mid lane, they actually have a really good play to be made on the Baron there. People think we're set up already, but Maple's hovering around the mid lane. Kami wants to put pressure now. If they can lock them into the 1 3 1, it's so hard to get out of that pit, like out of that lock, especially when you have a couple teleports and globals available. So, we'll see if that works out. And you're going to see the entire river being watered up by Pen Gaming, so Maple can never sneak in behind anyone. Maybe a play he can make, it's risky. But as he goes up towards the top side of the map, and then when someone when Kami is pushing it in, he try and jump him and get the kill. Problem is again, Flash wasn't available this time, but getting up there and not being spotted by the wards is the problem because once he shows on top side, yeah. Pain Gamer can just make a play on the other side of the map. And Pain are already set up for this one. They've got two wards on that eastern jungle. Mylon's set up to continue pushing every single wave and whittle down this bottom turret. The move towards him will be spotted, so Mylon should be safe pretty much at all times. There's the ulti by TF to make sure. I'm not a big fan of what Kami did in the last minute. He went top Start to push out. Now. Two guys on bot side. Yeah, he went top to push out one wave. There's too many wards there in the area, so Pain Gaming not confident. He went top to get one wave. Base, walk mid, ulti right now, ulti back top. He could have just stayed top. He had plenty of vision to keep split pushing, and Pain Gaming, they completely sacked their vision control. So I think we're starting to discover here why Pain Gaming's game times go so long, because they make maybe the right decision two or three times in a row, but then they add a mistake to that. And if you really right. want to close out games efficiently, it has to be four, five, six right decisions yeah. in a row, and then you punish your opponents. Luckily for Pain Gaming, because Flash Wolves have been forced so far back on the map, the passive mistake they're making right now hasn't really resulted in anything for Flash Wolves, but they might get a kill on the Mylon. active mistake. Yeah, Mylon in the front of the team, thankfully blocked out by a shield. Diud now, the man hooked in, line and sinker. Down he goes, Maple takes him out, five to four. 
Kill's getting closer. I mean, go back three minutes. The entire setup that we were talking about, three pink wards in the river, one, three, one, split push available. What happened? It all fell apart. Now suddenly, Mylon, why was he even there? There's absolutely no reason that I can fathom why your top laner should be there at this point in the game. And look at Flash Wolves immediately into the jungle they go over towards the Baron area. Scuttle Crab's gonna despawn. They've actually killed every single ward here. There's no vision left. They're baiting instead of starting it. They have to because there's two teleports available. They know they will get collapsed upon. Ball, they see Ari. This may be good though. It's a mini now, by the way. Ward over the wall and. Stay in commit though if you are the platform. And he cancels the teleport. So shorter TP cooldown for this Twisted Fate, but both are down right now. I mean, one bait generating two teleports. I think you can be happy with that. Oh, not a perfect amount of vision here. They're rotating back to Dragon Area. Dragon's about to spawn, I believe. Yeah. And Mylan went top lane without teleport. When the Dragon Timer is there on the scoreboard, you press Tab and you know it's going to be up already. Pain realized, up. Oh, too late. We can't get it. That's they our mistake. They didn't keep tabs on the Dragon Spawner. Didn't keep tabs on it. Much like Alliance. Too soon. <laughs> I, was, I was like, do I do I make that reference? In my position? Oh, oh, no. <laughs> what a reckless joke well, there. but that was good by Pain Gaming, though. They ran up to the top lane. They did group up. They realized, hey, whoa, whoa, OK, we can go top turret then instead. Yeah, yeah. You still saw Mylan head down to the river and realize late. You see the hesitation. They're, right. they're not planning ahead. They're planning in the moment. And when you plan in the moment, very often a team that is more strategically adept will just outmaneuver you. You often lose yourself in the moment. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so worth the dough for Pain for getting that top tower. Problem for them now is they just need to get more pick boards around this Baron. They had a single one. They had it multiple before, but then they moved away from it, gave it over to Flash Rolls, bought them a little bit more time. Pain, ga pain Gaming, in their mind, is not in a hurry. Nope, never are. But they're up 5,000 gold. Flash Wolves do have the Dragon lead. LMS teams actually love to snowball Dragon. Flash Wolves are no exception here. They're a bit used to this kind of scenario. two but dragons at 31 minutes. That's I a mean, slow snowball. But though. based on Pain's average game time, we're going to see Dragon 5 anyway. <laughs> That is the problem, though, when you have slow games. Absolute gold leads of, of really decent values, as we see the youth get hooked here, say 2,000, 3,000 gold. In the earlier stages of the game, they mean a lot. But as the game goes on and just gold generates on both these teams, relatively speaking, they become yeah. nullified almost entirely. And if you don't really make any other additional moves to increase that gold advantage, Flash Wolves do have a distinct possibility to come back into this game. Yeah, this really is the moment for Flash Wolves now, because Mari, or Marin Mylon doesn't have teleport Kami's on the bottom side because he's the only one with the global, but Stake can hold that one 1v1. So you have to take full river control now from, from Flash Wolf's side. Problem is, they haven't prepared for this themselves, so they have no additional pink wards to place at the Baron to force a potential fight, force Pain Gaming to come and face check you. So Pain Gaming can just sit back now and say, okay, we're just gonna clear the waves, and then we're just gonna wait for our cooldowns. Our TPs are gonna be up in two minutes, and then we can go back to playing 1 3 1. And the way this Baron dance is playing out is something you see of. of Mostly amateur teams trying to make it into, into LCS or yeah. inexperienced LCS teams. They're a step behind. They don't get perfect dewarding of the area. And then very often the team can sneak in a ward, just like the ward that Karsa actually just cleared. And that one ward just tells the entire story. Did they move into pit? No. Then they have to be in any of these bushes. Do we need to check that? No, because they're just baiting. <laughs> and you waste an entire team time with just one ward. And you really have to make sure that you have perfect vision control if you want to go for these baits. And Flash Wolves knew the TP was down because them baiting the Baron five minutes ago, or four minutes ago, was yeah. what forced the teleport. That's why as a team, you instantly got to say, okay, for the next four minutes, we can now set up vision around the Baron because they don't have the global advantage and we can potentially get a fight. That's our way back. That's our way to use our Ari now, who's been farming and farming and farming, but they only went back and bought like a single pink ward. It was placed outside of the Baron. Now they're starting it. Pain Gaming is around. Kami's yeah, already popped, but Kami's pretty far away. He's got to run across the map. 8,000 health on Baron, but it's enough to make the team run away. A Lantern out. Destiny, the only spell burned for this one. And Pain get to take away the wards. Mylon just sidesteps the hook, and they might be going for a bit more. Meganar lands a slow onto NL, jumps right Whoa. in. The flash done. Alone. But where exactly is his team? Like They're done. not anywhere around here. Mylon dies for nothing. Mylan. What was that? He saw the big play right in front of him. I can get a five-man Narwhal to add a world championship. Highlight Great. Wants to get the Penta. 
Probably most of the rest of his team already running back towards the mid lane. They weren't even like killing Baron. Like I can understand if it was a bait and Baron was at 2,000 health, but it was like 8k. It wasn't even close. I just want to go back to the setup from this play. Flashville starting that Baron was a play forced by Pain Gaming. When you do repetitive Baron base, you play the map on two lanes. Mid lane and top lane, and you leave bot lane exposed. And very often teams join in into that Baron Dance party. That's why nothing happens, because nobody really uses the third lane to push. When Kami goes bot to push, that prompts Flash Wolves to actually have a reaction. The only reaction is to start Baron. So good move by Pain Gaming. The problem with it is, right move, right move, wrong move. Every single time by Pain Gaming so far in this match. They can't really get a successive streak of good decisions, and that's what's putting them behind every time. Well, it's the first team to chain together a bunch of good decisions that might win this one. Flash Wolves playing from a 5,000 gold deficit, though. Need a lot of things to go their way. Forcing uh, the bait again, hiding around it, even yeah. trying to show their shooting Destiny. spells in there, and you can go in. So they get the first cooldown for it. Down the bottom lane, Mylan is now pushing with Teleport. So they will have to go back and catch their wave, unless you can maybe flash engage. Obviously not really why you pick the Darius. You want something to start to fight for him which has again been a big problem for Flash Wolves in how they always have to play around the shadows, denying vision, and it's not been really possible for now to start the Baron. But they know. TP has to come in. Mega Knight's gonna come from Mylon. He's coming from the wrong, from the right side, sorry. From the left, here it comes in, jumps back. Oh, hops too far, he hopped off ahead. Ulti comes in, the Krag has to split him up. Stake in the front lines, trying to survive. He needs to land a Q. Won't find anyone to hit though. First kill comes through, Sir T is dead, and Karsa is next. Both junglers down, a one for one Flash Wolves routed. And when you make these Baron plays, instead of putting the Pink Ward in the pit, use one Sweeper once, place the Pink Ward outside. You really can't afford to have those wards that Pain Gaming placed at the edge to see you enter the pit. Because you don't need a Pink Ward in the pit, because you will see when people get closer. So this is very entry-level Baron plays here from Pain Gaming, uh, from Flash Wolves overall, and they get punished for it. I got so baited by that teleport. I want to say it was the correct place, but it was on the left side. Yeah, I know. It, it was right meant. place. It was both on right the left and side. left at the Isn't same time. Isn't English a terrible language? Yeah. Where right literally meant the correct and the incorrect thing at the same time, but all the same, Pain Gaming we're already in position for the dragon. They get it clean, they can walk back towards Baron. This shouldn't Wait. be too bad. They might it get is this. gonna be started by Flash Wolves. Very far away. Oh, they, got they got this. got this. Just completely gave up the Baron control. It's spotted. It's down to 3,000. Early smite to set up Where's for the, the rend? rend. Shouldn't be hard. There it is. Picked up cleanly. NL can't miss that one. I just see it. To paint a picture for the people that can't see, the fish still takes a step backwards and angrily starts shaking his head like a disappointed father at this point. Yeah. Same for Dragon. Flash Wolves now in a commanding position here. 4,000 gold deficit. They can make up so much of this. 1,500 already earned in the Baron kill itself. There is a Zeke set up for BRTT. The actual team fight got good again for Pain Gaming. But they're up against Baron and they're up against Siege. Best play Flash Wolves could hope for here. Trade Dragon for Baron. No teleport for Mylan. It was used earlier. So you have now the lanes you can push down. If you are Flash Wolves, Land one hook or charm, and you just go all in on that one because you have the damage to take down some of these members. Promise you just never had the opening. And we've talked about this before. Split pushing teams both benefit and get punished a lot. You know, uh oh, Baron teams uh -oh. get Mylon. Yep, hooked right in. Gonna lot of get it, get a lot of damage. Oh! Oh, nearly takes out the flash hook. It's blocked. Mylon will live, but Dude might fall, and he is killed off stake. Gets the ulti, fears all the minions. They're gonna keep pushing forward now. Another turret goes down. They've got a lot to do. Pain Gaming. They were making decisions in the moment. They weren't planning ahead. 30 seconds max was how far they were planning ahead, and they actually caught up with them. They had a massive lead in the Euro to mid game, but they didn't expand or build on that lead at all. And now Flash Rules got the Baron and an inhibitor. They even still have a Goldie, but you can see how little that matters for Pain here. Flash Wolves, the Inhib goes down. They've still got a Baron buff for another 80 seconds, by the way. They can go for round two and knock another one down. Passive play in the start for Pain Gaming was okay. We look at the first 15, 16 minutes where they could wait for the play to happen to farm up. But then action had to start. Mylon is the guy who's getting caught out at first. I mean, he doesn't die, but the rest of his team have to jump in front of him. There's no communication. Kami is pathing down to the bot lane, and Mylon is posturing aggressively. He has to know that at least one of these targets will engage on himself. So Pain Gaming trying to defend both lanes at once, as if Flash Tools are not going to make any moves whatsoever. So no foresight at all, just no planning. Poor communication has been the downfall of Pain Gaming. 
Unfortunate for them, they had a good lead. Couldn't hold on to it. Flash Wolves, their second comeback now. They were behind against CLG early on in game one. Nearly brought that one back. Took on the Koo Tigers, got behind early again. Maple got crushed in lane. They found a way to make poke comp work. They won that one this time around. And now against Pain Gaming, 5,000 gold down for most of this one. Get one great Baron call, trading it for a Dragon. And now the siege continues with Baron buff for 15 more seconds. For, uh, for Sword Art. Well, sadly, his hook up ruined by that apprehend from Stake. But Flash was so confident that even when Unbreakable is up, they're choosing to charm the support. Milo needs another hook, has Meganar, though. He's nearly got Meganar. Well, Flash was just going to wait now. He's going to go. Pen's going in. Stun. NL cleanses out, and the front line is in front. Stake gets the kill, but he's going to drop. And now Kami gets one in. BRTT saved the back line. Baron buff ends, and it's a two for one. Very good engage to come from Pain Gaming. They know they have super minions coming on the top side, so they had to do something. Flash was wanting to back away and wait for those super minions and then move in and take the tower. Instead, though, Milan gets in there. Three man ulti, I believe, this time around. Tommy still has some form of wave clear, but it's still too much of a threat. Maple could make the play, and so back they go. Turret goes down. And so little, so many mistakes on both these sides because Flash Fools, with any bit of patience, they could have waited for this to happen 30 seconds later. That fight would have never happened. There's no reason to really put a NAR in Mega NAR this early. Just wait for the minions to push, push in bot lane, get another tower. Let's watch that again. Milo on 80%. You don't want to hook that guy. You see how the rest of the team is like, no, no, it's back. Back guys, way too you far don't up. have to go for any moves forward. Yeah, yeah, you assess, so. Two man engage from Mylon to start it at least. Take goes in, does drop after getting the kill. A long axe from him. Kaza goes down for and It means pain. Gaming can go back and defend the next turn. Didn't know you could fade away dunk. That seems really hard to do physically, but. Through the axe forward. He threw it forward, okay. Depends, I guess, on what part of the animation you uh, you no. fade because earlier we I mean, saw no. somebody flash in out of the game mechanics, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, so any melee ability that's like literally melee, if they don't go into fog, it'll complete. But if they do, like if they flash from a brush or over a wall, you haven't warded, then it will cancel. That's how that stuff damage always works. Yeah. yeah. We saw the opposite happen earlier. Uh, I think yeah, when he, was... he flashed off mid dunk animation, he flashed yeah, a roll into yeah. fog. <laughs> yeah. I was more making a like physics joke. That human beings couldn't do that, but Stake is Have no Have you never mortal. watched Space Jam? I, I was going to make the reference, actually, to Space Jam, but you cut me off. We're, like, talking about mechanics, but that, you know. Baited and outsmarted. Clearly. <laughs> That's sad. I got outsmarted by Greppo. That must hurt. <laughs> it does. It's okay. I'll regain my pride with some jokes later on. Right now, though, Pain Gaming still up 2,000. Like, they are refusing to say die. The problem is their base is in shambles, and Flash Holes have all the control. Yeah, suddenly your double teleport adds very little value when you're standing down towards your own base. Baron has faded though, so wave clear becomes so much easier. Kami can almost destroy this wave in one wild card combo. No chance of killing off Karsa. Just clears the wave angrily. Luden's Echo is in, plus a Void Staff, so full build for Kami right now. This is as basically damaging as you're going to get on this guy. And all the gold that he can use to earn, you can see he's up 100 CS over some of his teammates there. That's going to mean nothing. And some of this gold, he's going to lie to you on pain. Basically, the opening for pain gaming now is once they know Flash Wolves is going to go towards that Baron and start setting it up, you need that bot lane pushing already beforehand. So that's even with stake. And then push up the top side as well. So after three lanes going for you in terms of the minions before Flash Wolves goes down to set up the Baron, because then suddenly they might feel forced to back away again to go up and clear these three waves being pushed in. And then suddenly Pain Game can move in, clear away the pink wards, and get control themselves. And that, I mean, they have to now force a fight where Flash Wolves have to engage onto them. Otherwise, Flash Wolves can just slowly wait for the opening when they start Baron again with Rend and take it. What worries me is that right now, look at that Ruby Crystal that, for example, Sir T just picked up. That could have been a trinket upgrade. That could have built into either an improved sweeping lens if you really want to play around Vision, which Pain Gaming doesn't want to do, but that could have been a secondary scrying lord to really see whether Flash Wolves are starting or baiting the Baron. Having that information without having to expend Destiny could mean the difference between losing and winning a fight. Still need this bot lane here pushing for Pain Gaming. It's so key that they can force them back and not just have to walk in towards this Ari here over and over. Mylon looking to see if he can do anything. Meganar is very close for him, but they have to worry about the massive waves. So they're going to push up now, but Flash Wolves can just move into mid lane as well, and they know where Pain Gaming is, is moving. Someone's still got to go kick, take control of the bot lane. Of course, they've got two teleport users, so either one can go do it. But Kami, again, has no more income to put to use here. It probably should be Mylon. But with the setup around Baron, Flash Wolves are nearby. Karsa 
Shunked a little bit. I do you like this though from Pain Gaming, how aggressively they pushed up mid so they could move in and sit up near the Baron. Starting it is very risky though because Flashwolves, they are still nearby. So right on the front line, hooks into you, charm hits him as well. The tank doing his job, Sir T hooked in, and they get the first kill. Karsa goes down, but they trade back into Sir T. Mylan only hits Sword Art with the Mega Nar. BRTT into the back line, gets the first kill, pushes back Stake, and here comes the rest of the push. Stake has very little left to do, can't get the kill. A triple for BRTT, and Kami maybe gets the last one, an ace. I'm very impressed with the aggression from Pain Gaming and BRT Keeper. I don't understand Maple. Every single time the youth puts up his unbreakable, he not only unleashes the charm on me, also the orb of deception, the particle gets destroyed. He is becoming, instead of an AoE monster in these fights, a single target damage dealer on the support. Really big misplay by Flashwolves, but credit to Pain Gaming because they're looking to close out. And would you believe it? Every single team in this group has a win, and every single team in this group has a loss. They're only one game away from first place right now, and Pain Gaming take a win over the Flashwolves. We said it was the group of life. Every single one of these teams has some life. Just these barons just makes me so. Baron baiting as a concept isn't a beautiful thing, but it's just so poorly executed. I think we can just talk very quickly about what Pain Gaming did here in the end to set up for that first bar last baron and what Flash Wolves did as well. Basically, Pain Gaming instant push up the mid lane, and despite Flash Wolves having the wards in the river and the control. They decided to say, okay, we're not going to hold this here, so we have the vision around the Baron and we don't have to run into you. They left, they walked behind to catch the one wave with five members. So Pain Game was like, okay, well that's now super easy for us to move straight to Baron, cleared our start at the Baron, so now suddenly Flashwell had to walk down and we've seen time and time again, when Mabel and the rest of the team walks head first into Pain Gaming, it's very easy to block his damage and avoid him getting onto the back line. So Pain Gaming didn't even need that side lane pushing that yeah. otherwise could have forced Flash Wolves to give up the Baron control and go clear out the waves. They just walked straight up mid. Flash Wolves like, okay, let's go clear the minions. And that was the opening for Pain Gaming. That's how they got into the Baron. Yeah, Mylon and Diud honestly did a fantastic job soaking up a lot of damage, especially in that last fight, Diud with the Unbreakable there. Stayed alive long enough for Zeke to still be active on his AD carry, BRTT, and once one target dropped, he just jumped in aggressively. He knew I, either I die in the process, but you're trading damage so efficiently that, efficiently rather, that Pain Gaming could clean up. It worries me though for the next part of this group stage because both these teams have shown really, really exploitable flaws in their gameplay. Right. Yeah. Um, the decision, obviously with the cleanse mid and everything for, for Flash Wolves and how passive they played the early game. Pain Gaming had a good start, honestly. They had good yeah. lane swap. They got the leads for them. And then obviously we're looking at how long it took them to close out the game. And they even technically fell... Not sure if they fell behind in gold. I don't but think they were ever behind in gold. They lost completely the map control, at least. Oh, yeah. All the way down into their own base. They get the win in the end. That's the important one for them. Every single win matters in this group now, yeah. where every team is so close to each other. But there's some things they have to look at and, and fix for, for next week. Yeah, the big thing for me, right, we talked about pain shot calling the, you know, good decision, good decision, mistake, reset, Everything. good decision, good decision, mistake, reset. Flash Wolves had no way, like, they, had they no capitalized decisions. on a no decisions one, at all. Right? No decisions, but also just, like, I think it, they're also hamstrung by the fact that their comp doesn't do anything. Like, Stake's gonna keep losing his lane, and this double TP gets to split push them to death forever so that Flash Wolves never get to go do something aggressive because there's always someone pushing another lane into you. There's no aggressive place to make. Sword Art can maybe land a hook, and sometimes that Gotta means a kill. Gotta get in the jungle, man. But Braum blocks all the sieging. You don't have really good pushing when your two melees are Ari and Callista. Callista, one of the worst turret killers, to be honest. No, oh crap, get out of jail buttons there. And, and even when Flash Wolves finally had the lead back, or at least the control back, they could only use Baron for any of that. Yeah, and then Flash it really got nard. Flash Wolves' composition overall felt like jack of all trades, challenger of none. And they yeah. really couldn't get anything done here overall, especially with the poor amount of vision. Like, if you get good vision control, you can make almost any composition work because you can really use Fog of War to your advantage. Mm -hmm. But so few pink wards, so few really planned out movements. Neither of these teams were thinking ahead. Like, what, what are we trying to accomplish with these wards? It was more like, hey, I have ward, let's place it down, see what happens. Yeah, and exactly that point is, it, when you look at Flash Wolves, whenever there was an opening, and they could make, they could choose between two plays. Either one, we go and get one or two hits on a tower, or we walk into the enemy jungle and set up vision. They were always like, okay, what's their play right now that gives us something? Okay, hit the tower two times yeah. and then back away. We got tower damage. And then the next three minutes, they couldn't make any plays out of it because yeah. they didn't have any control then. So definitely something they have also struggled with before. 
which is why the siege combo poke comp they ran yesterday fit them so well because yep. suddenly you don't have to worry about that too much. It's about being together five as a unit. So that's definitely what they should be looking at next week for compositions they could run. Obviously, Nidalee was banned away in this yep. one, and even Varus, I believe, was banned away by Pain Gaming. Yeah, so unfortunately, not a win for Flash Rules, but a great one for Pain Gaming. Congrats to them for their first win of Worlds. We're going to hear more about that. We're going to send it over to the Shocks for an interview. Thank you very much, guys. Joined here by Kami after that win of Pain Gaming. First up, congratulations. Thank you. What a game. Um, we know you guys tend to play a little slower. Tell me when you guys said to yourself, listen, we have to just take this game home. This is our chance. Well, we knew we could win all of these games so far, and we were really underperforming, so we decided to change the play style because it wasn't working, so we need to try a new, something new, and it was accelerating, accelerating the game, and we did that, and it worked, so I'm really happy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one big thing I noticed is Mylon in there. He went every time Mega Nar was up. Did you have to hold him back at some times? Because he was very explosive. We do. That's the problem with Mylon. <laughs> He's sometimes a little bit over-aggressive, but that's the style of the guy, and we love him because of it, and it works. Sometimes yeah. sometimes I just need to hold him a little back. But. Hold him back a little bit, but in this one it worked. You guys closed it out. I heard you mentioning, I think we could have beaten all the teams we've played already. You got a week now. I mean, this is a fantastic win for Pain it is, but how do you see this group evolving? There's been some crazy things happening. Yeah, I think anything can happen right now, and I'm not counting us off, because I think we can still get out of group. So uh, we'll just study, 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 and practice, and do our best on next week. Yeah, definitely. Uh, looking at your reaction, though, and I don't, uh, expect anything else because you guys are very explosive. You're very happy with this win. Tell me a little bit about coming from Brazil and representing your country here. I know those fans love you guys a lot, but that must bring a lot of pressure on you guys as well. Yeah, the pressure is huge because like we have some passionate fans and we can't disappoint them. So we're really <laughs> happy about this win because we really wanted it. We're literally, literally crying at the end because we wanted it so badly. And, and how do you reflect on your performance? Because uh, people say, oh, it's a Brazilian faker. Who, who would you describe yourself as? Oh, I'm not putting myself on the level of faker, <laughs> but I'm really get, glad that people think that, and thank you for that. Yeah, you're uh, Kami, and I think that's big enough. You put out some great performances. The best of luck in the rest of the group stage. Thank, thank you so much, Kami and Pain Gaming, with their first win at the World Championship. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Shocks. A fantastic win for them, picking that up, making that group even more interesting. At this point, I don't really know what to think about Group. A. Great by them by recognizing that they need to switch things up and go back to something that worked for them when they qualified here. Pick something that is more aggressive, that can make plays on their own with the Twisted Fate. I expect it to be banned in the coming games for them, but at least they got a taste as to how they should be playing. Now, they should do it a lot faster, but they have the tools there. They know what they need to do to win. Yeah, they saw a lot of success with double TP when they played the finals against Chaos Latin Gamers. And also, CLG banned the Twisted Fate against them, so they knew that this was coming previously and wasn't picked up here by Flash, Flash Wolves. Even though they banned Mord, Lulu, Elise, I feel like you could have left the Elise open. They ended up being a really, really good pick of the Gragas there for Sir T, basically winning them that last fight. He had an amazing performance. If you watch that fight over again, it's just stellar. The way he catches Maple was awesome to look at. It's like, I'm just super happy the Brazilian faker, maybe I should say Brazilian fake, Bjergsen, you know? <laughs> no, but I'm just happy. He won a game. <laughs> <laughs> he just stepped up. Really happy he stepped up, but something that I need to talk about because I feel so passionate about it. I said it in the first day as well, the Darius. We've seen two teams use it properly, or three teams. It was Flash Wolves as well when they use it in the poke composition, in a composition where the enemy team has to walk into you. But when Darius gets kited, we see the Gnar in all of these games just does so much more. The Darius just gets kited and it's frustrating to me. It's really, really frustrating. Yeah. All right. He he, oh, go ahead. No, I, no, go for it. I was about to touch on the Darius. He's not just a pick him in any circumstance. Mm. They're, like you were saying earlier in the week, very good strengths, but very prevalent weaknesses. You have to build a composition around him. And I think the poke comp is definitely something that he fits into. But you were saying he's kind of the new Maokai. Yeah. Basically, you pick him if you're not the strongest laner. You get a nice lane. You, even if you don't have a lot of gold, you still have a ton of base true damage. So I think that Darius, we're kind of seeing that more and more, but you still have to slot him into the right composition. You can't just pick him willy-nilly. Now, Crumbs, you, you mentioned that they can play these games much quicker. It was good for them to recognize that they needed to change things up in order to get the win. And Kami just said that they aren't counting themselves out of this group. They plan on studying and practicing very hard for this coming week. What specifically can you point to in their play that they could have cleaned up in order to close this out faster? So Mylan had a huge lead over stake. You know, when you're both top wingers that build Black Cleaver, the first one to finish it will have a huge spike over the other. So, for instance, in that time, Mylon had the Black Cleaver while Stake had just Kindle Gem and the Phage. 
that's a time where you tower die of the diaries over and over and over. Nara with his ultimate has too much hit points to actually be killed from one shot from Darius. You poured in the Twisted Fate, level six every single time, you're gonna get kills over and over and over. They only did it one time when it was in the bottom lane. So do it faster, do it in the top lane, include your jungler as well. So make these global plays with the teleports, you're gonna see a lot more success. Something for them to consider in the coming week. Now throughout the day's competition, you guys at home were calling out the world-class plays. And when balls went big to secure C9 spot, a top group B, Blizzard main tweeted, come on and slam and welcome to the jam. Here's your world's big play of the day. Azir goes down as well, but the Tugs are coming through. A double kill for Boss, a triple kill for That's Boss. Nice. Holy cow, the go. get Benzak kill! A Benzak kill for Boss! That's right, he's been picking Darius. Kill Yasuo. Careful, careful. Yo, backline, backline. You win that. Yo, get him, get him. Let's no, go. Yo, good shit. Oh, good shit. Oh, good shit. No, you shit. got a Penta? Yo, yo, we win, we win, we win, we win. We win, we win, we win, we win. We win. We win. What the hell? Yeah, game. they're all dead somehow. Yeah, I don't even see how they died. Wait, that was yeah, not yeah. I mean, when Balls was asked what he was doing for practice here, he's saying, oh, it's all that Diamond 2 practice. I guarantee you he's gotten pentacles before in Diamond 2. It's really awesome to finally see Darius do something that's not just lose. I love Sneaky's reaction there. <laughs> just completely lost. They're like, did we win? Really that lost? even happened. Yeah. You took my job. I'm supposed to pentakill them. What, yeah. what the hell, guys? I think also this specific game speaks to my point. Darius in a, like, in a like, kind of kite composition where the enemy team has to engage, does so much. Yep. Bam, pentakill, easy. Well, there you have it, evidence. <laughs> evidence that Yamato Easy. knows what he's talking about. Well, we're officially halfway through the 2015 World Championship group stage, so let's see how the teams are stacked up. In Group A, CLG are sharing the top spot with the Ku Tigers. Meanwhile, Brazil brought the pain to the Flash Wolves and are now tied for second place with one win each. Then Cloud9 finished Week 1 with a perfect 3-0 record, while Fnatic, HQ, and Invictus are tied two games back. Group C was off today, but in Group D, Origin knocked down KT Rolster to grab sole possession of first place 3-0 while TSN moved out of fourth with their win over LGD. Now the fight to advance to the quarterfinals in London, England continues next week as we settle the score in Group A, starting with Counter Logic Gaming versus Ku Tigers. Then it's Flash Wolves looking for a little rematch revenge when they square off against Pain Gaming. And we'll keep the action rolling until two teams stand above the rest. So gentlemen, as we move into days that are group specific, there's many more games for them to prepare for going into one day. But specifically look, looking at Group A, we talked a little bit about Payne's chances. How do we see the rest of this group shaking out as they're very tight together in this race? Yeah, I feel like with that win and Flash Wolves and Payne kind of being closer now, I think that Ku Tigers and CLG definitely look like they're becoming more and more favorites. Even though they were favorites originally to come out of this group, that seems like it's going to start solidifying itself. But we start off with CLG versus Flash, or CLG versus Ku Tigers as the first game of the day, and that's going to be a lot, especially if Ku take that win, because then they'll own tiebreaker over CLG. When we started the tournament, we were talking about Ku. Monty was mentioning how they're very clever with their draft, and with one draft at IEM, they are able to dismantle SK for the rest of the entire split, and now they're relegated. Now I think that the match they had against CLG really cracked open what CLG is doing. Focus Poe Belter put these kind of team compositions that they were not able to deal with, and CLG struggled so much. They were so late into the mid lane party that I think that if teams adopt this style and target the bands, do the exact same thing that Ku did against them, CLG might be in some trouble. CLG got somewhat exposed today. Is that uh, opening for Flash Wolves or Pain to make their run out of groups, Yamato? Well, I think it's, uh, you got to give some credit to Ku Tiger's play as well. I think it was a very, very high level of play in terms of how they use the composition and generally move around the map in, in terms of Gorilla and the jungler Hojin as well. And I think it's very hard to kind of mimic that because it's just like a level of quality of play. But yeah. the, the strategy, I agree. I agree completely. Well, maybe they can pull some lessons from the Ku Tigers. Make sure to mark your calendars because we'll be back here with all the action next Thursday, October 8th at 2 p.m. Central European time, 5 a.m. Pacific. Be sure to stick around because in just 15 minutes, Shox, Jat, and Kobe will be here for a brand new world tonight where they'll be talking about the day's biggest stories. Now for myself and the entire live broadcast team, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week. If there were a time to try turn around, it would have to be this game. These are both 0 2 teams. The win is an absolute must. So keep chasing through. Aegon's gonna run it for support. While Total Pops is on his bit of damage, he's just massing it, tearing through the team. Now let's see Dyrus. He's in trouble. He gets taken down. Gombi and him still alive. 2v3. They might clean this up. Oh! oh, 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 o
Diamond two practice. <laughs> he has plenty of damage to kill off one. Walter will try to trade one back. The flash to keep oh, alive. Oh snap. my God! Snap! Two tigers tie in counter logic gaming over in Group A. Down it go. Pinch going against stun. NL cleanses out, and the front line is in front. Snake gets the kill, but he's gonna drop. Adi 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 adi